and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar titled The Future Is Now, Transform Your Business with SAP S4HANA. I'm going to pass things over to Nick, who is an S4HANA business development expert and will be our featured presenter today. Nick, you now have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll uh, dive right in uh, with a very short introduction on myself. My name is Nick Vervoort. I belong to SAP's uh, global market and business development team uh, for S for HANA, um, and I am uh, carrying responsibility for the North America uh, region uh, in that team. Uh, so I basically spend a lot of time with um, uh, our uh, colleagues uh, that are in the field, uh, sales and pre-sales people, and uh, U.S. customers uh, to uh, prevail the message on uh, S for HANA as being the future for uh, enterprise management. Um, uh, processing and uh, management. So uh, we'll be passing a bit of time through a session today on why uh, S4HANA is the future uh, of enterprise management and I would like to start it off with uh, looking at uh, some things that are changing um, around us and are driving that need for change in platforms that uh, SAP is providing and that US customers are uh, using. Just to give you a small snapshot of uh, important changes that we recognize and detect in the uh, consumer products and the retail industry, uh, for instance, and I th use this uh, because I think most of us should be able to uh, relate to those as we are all in our private life uh, consumers. So we should recognize some of the things that we see on the, uh, on the screen here. Our day-to-day -day behavior is uh, changing, is different from uh, five years ago or 10 years ago, uh, and we expect much more um, yeah, pinpointed um, one segment, you could call it, call it the segment of one, um, personalized uh, interaction with uh, whomever we are dealing with in our day-to-day -to -day lives when we're consuming services or, um, or goods. And that means that uh, the companies that are providing that to us as individuals also have to change the processes that they need to manage and be able to deliver on our expectations. So we see a high demand for uh, customer centricity, um, service towards the segment of one, and do not underestimate that if you are in the uh, retail or consumer products uh, industry, you will definitely uh, understand that uh, being able to uh, orchestrate a supply chain process from start to finish uh, to deliver on the expectation of one individual with a personalized uh, product or service is a quite complex and um, delicate thing to do. Uh, very uh, digitalized consumer supply chain is um, a basic need for that and is needed to be able to um, provide service uh, to the segment of one. We want to make use of technology in a smart way as consumers today. Uh, we are able to uh, book a cab, uh, or we call it book a Uber. Uh, it's becoming a um, it's becoming an expression. Um, so we are basically booking our transportation in a much different way than we used to do. Um, I th think we can say even five years ago. And we also want to monetize on new uh, customer offers that we can develop. Uh, and what we mean with that is that we see a lot of uh, product-oriented industries turning into uh, services industry. So uh, the servitization of uh, product sales uh, is happening at a very uh, rapid uh, pace as well. So for that, SAP has been developing and spending a lot of money in developing um, a new business uh, suite, which we call S for HANA that can uh, address uh, those challenges uh, with the underlying HANA platform. And with that, we can start to deliver on the expectation of what we call an intelligent ERP, which not only addresses those uh, business challenges that we see here on the slide, but also uh, goes a step uh, beyond that. And let me try to explain what we mean with intelligent ERP and what we consider to be the core ingredients that are absolutely needed to be able to deliver uh, what we call intelligent ERP. And it starts off with um, the one at the top, which is a that we have a consistent user experience for any 
anything that users of the intelligent ERP system need to do across multiple uh, platforms, and it needs to be um, it needs to be uh, very consistent across those platforms. This one, it doesn't help to have a very good um, laptop or desktop uh, experience uh, application uh, that you can use. And then if you switch to a tablet or if you switch to a mobile phone, it all of a sudden looks completely different. That, is, that does not help. So we need to have a consistent, um, basically moving into what we call a hands-free also UX uh, across different platforms that users today are uh, using. And I will come back to that hands-free UX um, in a little while as well. Second thing is uh, automation. And that uh, means that we just do not want to automate uh, business processes as we've been doing with traditional ERP uh, very heavily already. Uh, but we basically want to use um, machine learning capabilities and artificial intelligence to augment that to a level that was uh, impossible before with the technology that was available, meaning that we can actually automate a lot of the human interaction that is today happening with ERP systems um, uh, by taking out everything that is within what we call the normal. If there is a normal uh, flow of a, a purchase requisition to a purchase order, to a goods receipt, to an invoice receipt, uh, the payment uh, should be happening in an automatic way. If there is nothing that is out of the normal in that entire process, we do not see the need for human intervention in that normal process. Of course, there is still the need for human intervention in all of those things where there is something that is out of the ordinary and a human decision uh, is needed. So we will see a very significant increase in automation of business process execution um, in uh, ERP systems and S4HANA is going to be uh, one of the leading systems in that, and you will see that later on. And the third um, basic ingredient for intelligent ERP is that we um, allow for uh, next generation uh, processes. So that means that there, there needs to be a very high level of flexibility in introducing new business processes, new ways of uh, doing your businesses. So basically we want uh, our customers to start off with a, a basic layer of what we call best practices uh, that are built on the latest innovations um, that are very generic and similar across um, all customers in a specific industry, which will allow customers to really focus their, uh, their spend and their time on where the innovation is needed and where they can start building new business models and bring them into um, that same uh, ERP system as well. Now, when we look at um, what we have been doing so far, and we refer to S4HANA, and we'll show you on the next slide um, a nice animation uh, behind this as well. Uh, SAP has the capability today to build that intelligent ERP uh, with S4HANA on the HANA platform, uh, which we consider to be the key component and the key ingredient um, to be able to deliver those uh, those three requirements that we see for uh, an intelligent ERP. Because that HANA platform, which is uh, uh, just for your reminder, 100% in memory data management platform, allows for real-time processing, combining OLTP uh, and OLAP, so analytic processing and transaction processing on one and the same platform in real time, so no data duplication on that level anymore. And we have a uh, simplified data model that allows um, not only us to develop much quicker and to be much faster in um, innovating, but also allows our customers to be much more agile in uh, modifying their business processes to and tailoring them to the needs of the market. And I want to show you uh, on the next slide what that what that means, and maybe some of you have already seen this slide in past um, in past presentations. Basically, SAP has been building the SAP Business Suite, meaning um, our core back office uh, processes surrounded by uh, other engines, 
over the course of the last, um, yeah, I could say uh, 45 to 46 years, ever since we started off in 1972. Um, and the model of uh, how we were building that data structure that was serving all of those business areas was getting more and more complex um, because of technical limitations that we had on the data platforms that were available to us. Yeah. SAP was building on technology that was available, um, of course, in the 70s, we upgraded uh, a lot of that technology was upgraded over time. Uh, but we were still limited to the technology that was available uh, to be able to build the data models and the data structure to still serve at, in the best uh, possible capacity uh, the customers and the processes that we needed uh, to cover. Now, with the um, uh, build of uh, SAP S4 HANA, as I mentioned on the previous slide, we are um, today working on a platform which is real-time, in memory, combines OLTP, so transaction processing and analytic processing capabilities on one and the same platform, um, gaining a lot of speed, gaining a lot of uh, storage uh, space by uh, uh, additional compression techniques. So this has allowed us to re-architect the data model that is serving all of the processes that we've been building in the past. And uh, that new data model, um, looks a lot simpler, it also is a lot simpler to understand, um, and uh, the value behind uh, the simplification in that data model is it's basically a prerequisite to be able um, to be much uh, faster in developing new capabilities, to be able to analyze information very quickly because it's not difficult to find it anymore. Um, it's not scattered over a lot of different places. It's uh, basically a simple data model to understand. And it also allows us to um, build with new technologies um, like machine learning and artificial, artificial intelligence onto that same data model uh, with the technologies that are available uh, to us today. So the simplification of the data model uh, as such uh, may be a pure, technical, uh, a pure technical thing and very exciting for technical people. It is what it uh, enables that and makes it possible that is really interesting uh, when it comes to the future of uh, SAP S for HANA and the intelligent uh, enterprise. So, Look at this as an enabler, not such, not as such as a, a value driver uh, by reducing the size of the database and increasing the speed. It's what you can actually do with it um, uh, after that that is uh, making it really interesting. Now, when we talk about the intelligent uh, or intelligent ERP, we do not only want to look at the core business processes and business transactions that uh, most of you of our customers are running in our systems today, so purchasing and sales uh, management, warehouse management. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, things that are happening, sometimes what we call on the edge of that digital core, so the, the core business processes which are becoming uh, increasingly more important uh, for uh, our customers in, in that day-to-day -day, uh, activities. And we talk about uh, customer uh, experience, uh, engagement with our customers. We talk about workforce engagement. We talk about the network collaboration. And a uh, prime example of that is the uh, Ariba network, uh, but not to be forgotten also uh, Concur. Uh, and we talk about additional uh, applications and connectivity into assets and supply chain capabilities. Um, and that's where also, of course, the um, the use of um, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, and the Internet of Things actually also comes into play. Uh, we will be able to talk about that eventually later in another session if we want to go in a much deeper level. But uh, moving on, basically when we look at that, uh, that core, we see that um, the, the innovation in that core and bringing that to the, the latest platform is actually a prerequisite to be able to do a lot of the um, innovations that are happening on the edge and to be able to uh, include to those innovations into uh, your day-to-day -day, uh, usage and your day-to-day -day way of processing or managing uh, your business, I should say. 
Now, this all only makes sense, of course, uh, for SAP and also for you as uh, customers if um, that S4 HANA platform or moving to that S4 HANA platform um, makes your business more uh, future ready, but also drives value in the way uh, that your stakeholders and your shareholders are perceiving you as an organization or as a company. So when we talk about uh, the future um, of the intelligent enterprise and how S4 HANA fits into that picture, uh, we also want to look at where S4 HANA is adding value compared to some of the other systems that you may have available today or uh, what ERP uh, from SAP was capable uh, of doing in the past. And um, we have come up with a, uh, a very basic framework, as you can see, this is not really complex, uh, where we think value creationing, uh, creation sorry, is happening uh, with S4 HANA. And we basically see three big domains where value creation is being done with a move to S4 HANA um, and where we are uh, looking for that value creation when we uh, discuss the move to S4 HANA with our customers and our prospects. First of all, um, companies want uh, and, and shareholders and stakeholders expect uh, companies to be growing. That can either be uh, inorganic, in an inorganic way, through mergers and acquisitions, uh, through spin-offs or carve-outs of um, existing divisions, or that can be in a organic way. And there's different um, there's different components we can look at uh, where S4 HANA allows to add value. Uh, in that way by growing sales volumes, by increasing uh, price flexibility without losing um, a, a decent overview on uh, margins uh, on that individual customer level eventually, uh, by introducing new business models, by moving into new markets uh, very rapidly, so expanding geographically, and by increasing a product portfolio, uh, so by introducing new uh, products into your product portfolio. Second big level or bigger uh, area where we see value creation with s hana is the profitability uh, of your organizations. Uh, by avoiding or reducing uh, costs through better visibility throughout the entire chain uh, of costs that are incurred uh, related to product or service sales. Uh, by moving some um, investments uh, from CapEx into OPEX uh, through the delivery model that we have with, uh, with S4 and allowing for much more flexibility there. Um, by specific uh, line of business related costs like uh, IT or finance, um, uh, I, I showed you in, in one of the previous slides, the simplification in the data model and I maybe uh, understated it a little bit um, by saying it was maybe a technical view uh, to say that the, the, sim the, the simplicity of the model is leading to reduction in database size uh, and into uh, higher speeds but it also has its impact on a positive impact I should say on uh, IT costs. Yeah? Uh, smaller databases mean less infrastructure uh, that is needed uh, it means faster uh, backup processes. It means faster IT development cycles, uh, and so on. So don't don't underestimate that. Even though I was maybe um, downselling it or underselling it a little bit. Second big area on the profitability area is the utilizations of uh, assets that are available uh, to you uh, as an organization that can help you increase that uh, profitability. Utilization of uh, inventory that you have reducing the inventory uh, for that matter, a utilization of cash that's available, utilization of uh, human uh, resources uh, and IT resources. And the last area, uh, and that is I think where um, there is a lot of exploration uh, for all of you as customers uh, to be done, is the agility. So the way uh, in which we conduct uh, our businesses and the way in which a um, intelligent ERP like S4HANA can help you in being more flexible, in having comprehensive insight for uh, all users right at the fingertips when 
uh, they are performing their day-to-day -day tasks. So increasing that um, that prof that uh, productivity, but also the um, the flexibility with which they can make decisions and um, and changes uh, to a specific processes that are needed. Now, this may seem as a, a very big step forward and a very big leap uh, to be taken as an organization. So uh, we see an evolutionary uh, path uh, for our customers um, that are going from a traditional ERP uh, environment, whether that is SAP or something else, um, to an intelligent ERP environment like, um, uh, like uh, S4HANA. And going through uh, those different phases is something that um, I don't think that, that you can do all at once and, and uh, you should also uh, consider uh, what, is, uh, what is part in each of those phases. So uh, don't, don't, skip, um, uh, don't skip the content on any of those uh, components. And basically you're going through different phases from modernizing uh, the technology uh, in itself um, improving the visibility of uh, innovation, or oh, sorry, of uh, data that is available to you uh, as an organization and that you have been acquiring uh, over the past um, sometimes decades in, in processing those transactions and that can help you in improving um, the way in which you um, handle your day-to-day -day operations, which is the next step. You can start learning from that increased improved visibility and start simplifying some uh, operations uh, that will deliver you um, a business value. Yeah, and that goes back to what we mentioned uh, or what I mentioned on the uh, previous slide, which basically makes you ready to really start um, transforming uh, your business. And I will uh, come to uh, one example um, a little bit later of a customer that has uh, gone through the process and um, uh, is doing uh, at least a part of their business in a totally different way uh, today. Now, before doing that, I want to just um, share with you uh, a statement that we see from um, a benchmarking study that was done uh, for us, um, uh, yeah, actually a year ago around uh, digital transformation. Uh, again, taking the example of uh, retail as we are all individuals and uh, retail consumers. Um, about 70%, so 69% of our retail uh, retailers uh, consider that it's important to have detailed visibility into um, their global inventory pool. Um, and if you're only a regional player that uh, you can replace that with regional, that's perfectly fine. And be able to optimize the source it from anywhere and fulfill anywhere model to be able to deliver on the expectation of the end consumer. Today, or at least a year ago, only 15% are able to do so. Uh, and I can share a real life example. I uh, basically just um, actually moved to the US, so I moved into a new house um, and I uh, went into a DIY, or I needed to go into a DIY store to get some, uh, to get some things. Uh, I will not uh, disclose the name of the brand. Uh, so I decided, first of all, to look on the website uh, what was the closest store to uh, to my location. That all worked fine. Uh, and I also tried to check on the inventory in that store uh, to figure out whether this, those products that I wanted and that I needed were all available uh, in that store. Uh, according to what I found on the website, everything was there. Uh, so I basically printed myself a little bit of a shopping list um, with uh, what I needed and uh, drove out to the store. Now getting there, uh, looking for uh, some of those products, I figured out that they were uh, not available. So I decided to address that with one of the um, the store clerks and uh, basically they explained me a bit, a bit of uh, the back office, I should say, um, uncovering that what a consumer is seeing on the website does not correspond 100% with what is reality in the store. Now that made me um, a dissatisfied consumer at that point in time. At the same time, it uh, pops up an opportunity for me uh, to teach them that SAP can do something for them. But um, 
this is happening, I think, uh, and reflecting exactly what you see in the statement here on that survey um, that was done for us uh, a year ago. So insight into inventory and visibility in real time is helping uh, better uh, service to customers. Um, it will help also uh, valuation, uh, inventory valuation as a sub-ledger uh, in S4 uh, allows for better product profitability because you can make decisions on moving products from one store to another also based on how does that impact the margin that I will have on those uh, specific products uh, and integration of all of that into an omni-channel approach. So whether it's on the website or a app that um, that a, a retailer would have or whether it's in store uh, or whether it's through a distribution channel um, that is all uh, helping so that visibility is really a crucial component and you would need a real-time in-memory platform to be able to deliver that there is no way um, around that, unfortunately, I must uh, repeat that and, and because it's it's uh, it's reality. Now let's move to a real life customer example on uh, automation and um, intelligent uh, ERP. And I will come back to some of the things I mentioned on intelligent ERP at the start of the session. So there is a customer that is in a um, uh, it's a, a pretty significant size customer which is in the industry of uh, providing building and um, uh, maintaining wellheads um, uh, wellhead compression sorry uh, for gas wells in uh, Latin America uh, and basically to make sure that those gas well heads um, run properly and function properly uh, there's basically a technician that drives out and visits those wellhead locations that are sometimes very remote um, to uh, take note of um, how the wellhead is operating, take note of some uh, readings on temperature and, and um, um, usage, uh, and eventually, if needed, also um, uh, take note of uh, things that would be needed for uh, for repair if uh, the, the technician that's out there with their uh, the, with their little truck don't have the components at hand in the truck. So don't forget, there's also something that is called mobile stock. Yeah, so there is components that uh, the technician is having in stock in their truck. If those components are not sufficient to do the repair that is needed. Uh, then uh, you can understand that that's going to be costing uh, money. Step number three: the technician completes their tasks and uh, goes back to the uh, to the um, the office, um, the the centralized uh, office. And in that back office environment, there would be entering the meter readings that they've been taken note of, um, and uh, taken note of any repairs that had been done or repairs that need to be done, and uh, actually putting that all back in a back office system, which would then be triggering uh, the invoice towards the customer on the usage um, of that wellhead um, and eventually also uh, triggering uh, internal charges for uh, repair uh, that would uh, that would allow for cost measurement uh, on on what's happening with that uh, with that wellhead. So that's the process basically before uh, moving to uh, moving to S4 HANA and applying some additional uh, technology, you can see that this is a very uh, manual process for um, uh, things that are sometimes very remote, so also very costly to drive people out there, uh, let them be on the road for a very long time, sometimes only figuring out that there is nothing wrong with the wellhead and uh, everything's fine, so only taking meter readings. Now, after switching to uh, S4, uh, and I will uh, jump forward. Um, after switching to S4 and some uh, some other technologies, so also applying uh, Internet of Things and uh, SAP Cloud Platform, uh, basically the uh, wellheads um, that are uh, equipped with uh, uh, meter reading that is connected to the Internet can automatically provide back to the centralized system. Now, 
uh, usage-based information, information that will allow for automatic billing uh, to the customer. And there cannot be no discussion about whether that billing is uh, correct or not, because there's no one writing it down, there's no one making any writing mistakes or having to interpret someone else's writing, um, and eventually uh, having the opportunity to make uh, to make a mistake. So this is automatic communication between the wellhead and the invoicing system in the background on usage-based invoicing towards um, that customer. Now. Simultaneously, those uh, same sensors or they, those wellheads with additional sensors, I should say, can also report back on uh, the performance, not only from a usage perspective, but also for some other components like uh, temperature, uh, wind speed around it, uh, pressure, uh, you name it, whatever is needed to uh, measure the health uh, situation of a wellhead that is out there somewhere. Um, remote. Combining that information with uh, predictive algorithms now provides uh, capability to this customer to determine based on those algorithms when a, when a machine is underperforming to uh, compare to other machines of the same type, same size, same type of location. Um, and uh, the system would automatically be able to trigger a service ticket um, that would also indicate which uh, areas of the wellhead are uh, underperforming, so uh, allowing for a decision before driving out a technician to that location, which kind of components that technician, uh, which is highly skilled and thus not a cheap labor force, uh, would be needing to be able to, um, uh, to perform uh, that maintenance task. So this is automation on the one hand, automation in a business process where we see, and the customer in this case also sees no value in adding manual tasks for reading a meter, typing that into a system and manually triggering an invoice to be going out. That is all automated, yeah? so that is what we, what we talk about when we say automation of business processes, so taking out human intervention where it is not really uh, needed. And the same actually has happened on the servicing part here, where the system is going to tell when a in manual intervention is needed from a uh, service point of view, but also um, uh, from a, a check point of view to see if, if the reality out there in the field um, is still 100% uh, relevant for the algorithms also that are used. So if uh, the algorithm would say that a service uh, is needed on the wellhead, a technician goes out, comes back, uh, no service had, uh, had to be performed because all, in reality, everything was still good. Those algorithms can start learning from that and uh, make that decision better uh, also in the future. So basically, that brings this customer to a point where they can reduce downtime uh, by predicting failure and avoiding failure eventually, uh, but they can also heavily reduce labor time by eliminating non-value added visits to those wellheads and non-value added repetitive tasks of just typing over what someone else has been writing uh, to trigger invoice processes. So much higher yield percentages uh, for those wellheads, customers that are more happy uh, and the company that's performing all of those being more efficient in uh, delivering that happiness to their uh, to their customers. So they save a lot of time in this case, um, and that means by definition also a lot of money. Now this may sound uh, to a certain extent uh, pretty futuristic if you're uh, currently an ERP customer or you are just starting your journey uh, onto S4. So I do want to share with you um, what SAP has available today uh, in S4 as uh, innovations, um, and they are, uh, to be honest, uh, quite numerous. And uh, it's an animated slide, so I will go to it um, uh, pretty quickly. We, let's start off with uh, what, we, what we have been delivering in different areas uh, in what we call new insights. Yeah? And insights uh, is something that's pretty uh, important in, in the total value delivering uh, in the intelligent enterprise because insights mean 
in, in the moment analytics um, when someone is performing a business transaction. So new insights in multiple uh, areas of the system, not forgetting that there is an em embedded analytics layer within the system, uh, which allows uh, for that to be, uh, to be extended to you. New in S4 HANA today is also a lot of uh, areas, business uh, process areas that uh, technically in the future used to be outside of uh, ERP and most ERP systems, not just for SAP, by the way simply because of the technical capabilities that SAP and um, other vendors had been using to build their ERP uh, solutions on. Yeah, so those technical capabilities uh, did not allow to incorporate all of those capabilities that were just now added until now, and, and more of them are coming, um, uh, are now back uh, integrated back into that core solution. So when you implement or install an S4HANA system, all that you see here uh, as new in S4HANA uh, uh, is now available uh, right away. You don't need additional infrastructure. You don't need to set up integration processes and maintain them, which is a costly and uh, sometimes uh, nerve-wracking exercise. Thirdly, there are some new business processes that have been uh, uh, implemented or added to uh, S4HANA, something that um, uh, traditionally the ERP solution could not uh, deliver. And I want to go to one specific one or, or point out one specific one here, uh, which is called demand-driven MRP. So this is something that is, I think, revolutionizing the way in which specifically in retail, wholesale, and um, uh, consumer products, uh, companies can start serving their end consumers. Yeah? So uh, MRP, so material requirements planning, now really being based on uh, demand and not just being uh, capacity constraint uh, planning uh, that is happening. So this is something that is uh, pretty new. There is a demand-driven MRP institute yeah, which has been uh, involved in, uh, in developing this uh, as well. So this is an, a totally new capability that SAP has been able to build because of the technology of SAP HANA, which is under, uh, under S4 HANA, the simplified data model, the fact that it's in memory uh, and, uh, and with um, the uh, UX that is consistent across uh, all the platforms that our uh, users are using. Last but not least, there are some additional components or capabilities that SAP has been building into S4HANA and provides today. Yeah, so this is not future, this is today, uh, that are machine learning and predictive uh, in the predictive uh, area. So predictive uh, quote to cash, you heard me talking about predictive maintenance in the previous uh, example. We are uh, today uh, already deploying uh, something that we call uh, Copilot, which is uh, SAP's uh, digital uh, assistant. Yeah, so uh, you have uh, probably all heard about uh, Siri, uh, Alexa, uh, I don't know, uh, all the other names of the other uh, providers of digital assistants that are out there. SAP has got its own digital assistant for running business processes, um, which is going to be uh, Copilot. Uh, it's already there, um, and the uh, the broad and depth of what Copilot can do uh, for our customers is expanding uh, very rapidly. So, in the near term future, you will be able to talk to your uh, S4 HANA system rather than opening up a GUI screen and asking it to deliver a report uh, for you to be able to view at the information that you want. So, moving towards the autonomous uh, enterprise, as I mentioned already, is uh, is an evolutionary uh, is an evolutionary step, which uh, includes uh, three main uh, components: automating uh, processes. And SAP uh, has the bold goal of um, uh, automating, I think, about 50% of the human interaction with an ERP system um, in the very near term uh, future. Yeah, so that means that 
basic processing that users are doing today manually in the system are going to be heavily reduced due to automation. Everything that is within uh, something that we can define as compliant in a process will happen automatically. There is no human intervention that will be needed for that anymore. Increasing the intelligence of the system, so having information wherever you are in the system, whenever you want to access it at your fingertips, and the autonomous enterprise, so not just the car that can drive itself, but the uh, the business management or business process management system that can drive itself is something that we are working towards um, very heavily. Using simulation, using predictive capabilities, adding conversational uh, UX, yeah, so being able to talk to your uh, S4HANA system rather than having to open up a screen and typing on a keyboard. Yeah. And contextual awareness, so when you're in a certain area in the system, from there you can switch to information which is within the context of what you are, uh, of what you are looking at. Now, just um, one example I wanted to share with you uh, on uh, very heavily, uh, for very heavy automation is in the order to cache uh, process yeah, with uh, machine learning. Um, so anything that is within the ordinary between uh, the payment advice that is being uh, that is being generated and the payment that has to be cleared at the end of that process, everything that is within uh, what we define or will define in, in those rules of those business processes as being normal will be handled automatically. So if the payment advice and the amount of the payment correspond 100%, there is no human action to trigger a batch job or to trigger a transaction needed anymore that will happen automatically. Only in the case where there is an exception, so something that's outside of the rules that will trigger a human person to make a decision and say what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So we can use that information to teach the algorithms to understand what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So that will allow us to increase the level of automation even further um, down the road by teaching the algorithms with the data that we provide to them uh, what we accept and what we do not accept um, as a organization. Uh, to uh, finish it off, I would just want to come back on, um, on one summary slide when it comes to um, S4HANA. So I talked about uh, intelligent enterprise um, and, and, and a lot of uh, things uh, in, in the last uh, yeah, 40 to 45 minutes. I hope you have uh, picked up on the message that the simplified uh, architecture and the streamlined data process allowed for um, value creation for shareholders and stakeholders through one of those three areas that were on that slide. We have in the moment analytics today in a new uh, user experience, uh, which is Fury and is consistent across devices. So. Uh, uh, consumers of the information or people that are executing transactions can um, switch to uh, information related to those transactions um, in the moment. So there is basically already today um, uh, exception-based uh, business processing uh, that in in that um, in that analysis overview that a user will have, they will see where uh, specific things are out of the out of the bound or what is expected and can even use that as a priority to work on. Business suite applications that were not part of the core in the past, like warehouse management, like transportation management and others that SAP had been building outside of the traditional ERP solution, again, because of technical constraints, have come back to the digital core because of the capabilities we have now today. We have been simplifying business processes and providing new business models uh, and that allow customers to go even further and, and build new businesses from that. Industry solutions today are all back into the core and also work together. 
uh, if you are a customer that is in a very diverse industries, then you will know that uh, running a retail system together with another industry or some other industry solutions is very challenging uh, technically and in some cases cannot be done today. And as for HANA, those components have come back to the core uh, for one and two, we have re-architected them in a way that they can also um, seemingly work together. So that means that you as a customer can use capabilities of all those industry solutions on one and the same platform. You don't have to deploy different systems anymore. Um, we can provide today the capabilities that I talked uh, both on-premise uh, and in the cloud. So if your question is, does SAP have a cloud enterprise management solution for me as a customer, the answer is yes. So all of what I talked about today can be deployed on-premise and can be provided to you as a cloud solution by SAP. And we natively integrate with line of business cloud solutions that are on the edge. Remember the slide with the globe in the middle and then uh, some solutions on the edge like success factors, like Ariba, uh, like field class, like Concur, uh, we have native integration into those solutions uh, today. And with that, I want to uh, thank you for your time uh, and attention. Um, and uh, I want to hand it back to you, uh, Kelly. I don't know if there's any uh, questions uh, in the question pod or in the chat uh, today. Yeah, thank you so much, Nick. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to type those um, in the chat now and we will address those over audio. Wanted to just remind everyone that this session um, has been recorded and I will send you all a recording link later today to review the session or pass on to any colleagues who were unable to join us. Also wanted to remind everyone that New Horizons is an authorized training partner of SAP, uh, providing world-class training globally on SAP software and products. So if you're interested in more information on this webinar or have any questions regarding our available uh, SAP course offerings, please log on to our website at newhorizons.com or contact your local New Horizons for further information. Um, if you are not familiar with your local New Horizons, you can do a zip code search on our website to find the center nearest you. And Nick, it looks like we don't have any questions right now, so I just want to thank you for joining us and presenting on behalf of SAP. My pleasure, and thanks to everyone uh, for joining this session. All right, thank you so much, everyone. That will conclude today's webinar. You may now log off. Have a great day.